Okay, let's go over some very basic automation in Pro Tools, which really means kind of recording different aspects of what's going on in the music so that when Pro Tools plays back and finally bounces your mix, things like volume will be automated. It will automatically go up at the right time or down at the right time, or the pans will go from left to right. So those kinds of things. All right, let's get started. Okay, the first place to go when you're getting started with automation is Window and then Automation. And that will bring up a most likely smaller window than this. So usually you just see about four or five of these buttons here. And what you want is to have some of these enabled in order to automate them. So if I want to be able to automate the volume, it needs to be red. Right, it needs to be enabled. If I want to be able to automate the pan so that it can remember changes I've made in left to right, that's there. These are send volume, send pan, send mute, and the mute. Once you've done that, so now your system will allow you to record automation for those things. And then what we want to do is learn just a few very basic ways of dealing with automation. So uh, this is our automation selector here. So right now it's set to read, and there are quite a few here. So there's off, touch, latch, a combination, touch and latch, write, and trim. So what we're gonna deal with in this video is just read, write, and off. Let's first uh, do a little automation on the vocal track. So what I'm gonna do first is actually open up a little bit more of the view in this edit window. So I'm gonna pull this uh, librarian menu open and click on IO. And once I do that, you'll see I'll have my input and output from the mix window showing here. And I can actually get the volume slider if I click the tiny little volume slider right here. That will actually bring up a little mini mix window volume slider right here. So right now, it's not gonna change at all. It's just gonna stay where it is while it plays back. Tonight comes and I so say that we want to make some adjustments in the volume of the vocal, we would switch to write mode and you'll notice it turns red here. And so does the uh, little strip that I have here too. It's on auto write, automation write over here in the mix, which would also be showing up in the mix window. So you'll see that there is now writing automation. And you can do this from the mix window or from this little pull down here. I like to see it go by as I'm writing the automation. And what I'm gonna do is just hit play. It's not recording. I'm playing, but I'm in write mode. And what this will do is record any changes that I make on the volume slider. So here we go, or actually any automatable changes that I make, but I'm just gonna stick with the volume right now. So here we go, playing back. Tonight comes playing around with it a little bit. So just so that you can see it. So we've just written some automation and as soon as I stop it, stop playback, it switches to another mode. But I'm just gonna go ahead and move it over to read. And then we need to be able to see the automation line that I just made. So in order to see it, there's a couple ways. One is right on our track view selector, you can just go to volume and notice they're all yellow all the automatable things were just writing information as I played back because I enabled those in my window. So I enabled in our automation window, plug in, volume, pan, mute. So now over here, volume, mute, and the pan left and right. So those are all now automated. And you'll notice this is the volume automation line. And you can see that every time I move that slider, it recorded of, of an automation line here. So you'll notice if we play back in read, which means it's gonna read back whatever automation I just created, uh, it will magically control that slider without me touching it. Oh, and then it's going to drop. My heart. 
Now, once you've done this, you're not going to be able to control a general volume level. So notice I just pulled this slider down. If I hit play, it's going to go back to reading this volume automation that's written and go right back up. So I can't mess with it. It's going to keep pulling back to the automation. So I can affect it for like a second and then it forces its way back to whatever automation is uh, listed. So if I've recorded some automation and I don't want to particularly get rid of it, but I still want to just kind of hear the track without the automation playing back, that's what off is for. So I can turn it off, it will play back, and now it's ignoring the automation. It's just going to stick, and you can actually see the line of where the volume actually is right now. So this allows me to change and experiment with the volume without it reading it back. So that's off. So off means it totally ignores any automation. Read plays back what automation you've written. And then write allows you to create automated changes in volume and pan and any of those things. Now, you don't always want it to be right on top of your waveform, and you don't always either want to switch back and forth. So there's one more place you can see automation lanes. So I'm going to go back to waveform here. So that's just the regular waveform. And this little tiny, I don't know, barbell or something here, if I click on that, I can click on it, and then I'll get a plus and a minus and one of my automation lanes, which was volume. So there's now my automation lane for this audio track, and I can see as many as I want. So I can either switch this lane to be something else, or I can hit plus and get a second one that's say maybe mute or pan, right? Maybe I have my left pan or whatever it's going to be, right? So automation lanes, and then I can get rid of those by clicking the plus and the minus. And if I don't want to see that one, I can just click our barbell again. Cool. Last thing. So I'm going to use actually the main view selector so it's a little bigger and zoom in a little bit now once you have automation you don't have to rewrite it in order to change it again you can use the grabber that's kind of your main one uh, to adjust things so these are called breakpoints right these little white circles and then i can adjust them by clicking and dragging make new ones by clicking anywhere away from any other breakpoint and then, so I can add breakpoints just by clicking with the grabber. I can adjust by clicking on a breakpoint and dragging. And then I can remove with our usual reverse option key. So I hold down option and I click and that will get rid of breakpoints. Right, so we can have a straighter line if I want. I can get rid of these wherever I like. Okay, so let's just call it at that for now. So that's your first introduction into automation. Now, if you do write this automation and then change your mind about it, you can hit Command A for select all and then hit delete. And that will bring us back to no automation. And then I can, even if it's in read, uh, then affect the volume and it will stay again. So I'm gonna bring back up that volume thing. So it's a letting me change things now because uh, there is no automation in volume right now, right? So I've just removed all the automation and that means read is not going to do anything because there's nothing to read. So hopefully that's pretty clear and easy. Uh, often if you're not able to write automation, you know, it never turns red when you put write down, then you know that something in that window is probably not enabled. So remember window, and then automation, wherever that's hiding. And then the red ones are the ones you're able to write to, right? So automations. And then you can also hit suspend, and that will turn them all off temporarily. And then you can turn them all back on if you want. So if you also want to just play around in the session for a little bit without any automation being read back, you can also suspend all of it globally with that suspend button. So that's pretty useful too. Okay, so hopefully that all makes sense, and I'll see you in the next one.